Welcome to Nerd HQ, everybody. This thing and that thing. How's everybody doing? Good morning. The few, the proud, the tired. Who's at their Starbucks? This guy. Um, uh, welcome to the uh, fourth annual Nerd HQ, everybody. Uh, who's been here before? <laughs> you guys are awesome. Who's here for the first time? Yeah. Who's very happy that they're here for the first time? All right. Uh, so we got some different chairs, as you can see. We've been trying to work that thing out for a while. Uh, sorry I'm a little bit late. We've been having some... Uh, well, I'm going to go a little bit later with you today, so if that's okay, we'll work that out. For everybody out here uh, that I, I see wearing merch from years past, from this year, I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you for supporting. I love you. I love you. It's the first panel. Don't make me cry now. That's, that's way too early. It's going to happen. It's going to happen way too many times. I am already underwater. This is insane. Uh, let's get into... Oh, yes. Is there flash photography allowed in this panel? Very good. Is there video allowed in this panel? No. But are you going to be able to watch it awesome and live stream later on? Yeah. So you don't even need to. It's so great. Uh, hey, let's uh, give a round of applause to every single person who's put together this stage. Our audio, our video, our camera guys. We're going to make the best event we can for you guys this year. We're going to keep making it as good as we can. I'm sure there's going to be kinks. Bear with us. Uh, uh, so let's just jump into it. Anybody have any burning questions? Uh, raise your hand. You'll get a mic. Uh, yes, hand that one down. That person back there. In fact, raise your hand now, and we can get people with... Oh, you have a question right here. So yes, uh, uh, Batgirl, yes. What's your question? Um, first, I just wanted to say I'm really glad to be here and not have to wait overnight in line. <laughs> You're, well, you're welcome. <laughs> and I hope that Nerd HQ has a long future Thank here you. in San Diego. Um, Thank you. Well, it will if you guys keep coming. If you don't, then <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> I don't know. Continue. <laughs> okay. My question is, are you ever going to come out with a Christmas album? I know you maybe mentioned it at one point. <laughs> I would pay good money for some music. From you. What is good money? Like $100 an album? Because I will gladly charge $100 an album. Because maybe five people will buy it. Um, I, would I'd I would love to. Uh, you can have a seat, by the way. So, no, it's okay. By the way, that's one thing. D don't forget, you can actually have a seat after you've asked a question. Some people just, they're still standing. No, no, no. There's people behind you occasionally. Um, so I, w I would love to. I love, uh, I love singing. I love Christmas tunes. Um, Occasionally, I'll do one on, you know, do a little video and put it on Twitter for you guys to listen to when I've had a brandy. Um, I don't even drink brandy. I don't know why would I use that as a... Uh, but I do, I do. I would love to. I don't know. Uh, I, it's one of those things where you really, like, I don't know, like, uh, as, as somebody who works in entertainment, like, you're constantly exposing yourself. Like, I'm exposing my... Not exposing myself. Not exposing, exposing myself. <laughs> Uh, but you know, you like you, you put yourself out there, and you and you and you leave yourself up to a lot of criticism, uh, and it's hard. I don't know if people really realize, like when you when you put yourself out on Twitter or Facebook, or you do <laughs> you do panels in front of three hundred people. Hey, by the way, we have three hundred people in these panels now. We're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, so it's tough. You know, it's like if I go and do an album and then all of a sudden, you know, I, uh, uh, thousands of people could love it. But then like five of them just go, you suck. And I wish you never sang anything. And no, I'm just saying it happens <laughs> and it crushes you, you know, like it's super it's it's super hard. It's not it's not easy to take that stuff lightly. I wish I, could. I I'm do OK. Sometimes sometimes I don't. I mean, even coming into Nerd HQ, by the way, like our whole crowdfunding campaign, like there was some vitriol. There were some people that just hated on us and. I really, like, it was you guys. By the way, here's another question. Did, who, who contributed to the crowdfunding campaign? From the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of all of our hearts, thank you guys so much. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for believing in the vision that, and, and everything that we are trying to explain. And thank you for not 
buying into the stuff that people were trying to spin on us and saying, oh, you're taking advantage of people or whatever. We love you. We appreciate you. We want to keep doing this for you and, and, and for us and for Operation Smile and for everything. So thank you very much. Um, so to that extent, uh, to that extent, I'd love to. I plan on doing it. Uh, I just I just got to sack up a little bit and go and do it because <laughs> it's scary. OK, uh, who, who is next? Who is that right here? Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Hi. I mean, that's a lot of skin. Continue. <laughs> Not to, not to, I'm sorry, continue. <laughs> Are you Wonder Woman Slave Leia? Is I that am. what's happening? You're Wonder and, Leia? And I have the Flash. With and the Flash Slave Leia. Everybody take a gander and give them a round of applause. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was some sacking up required. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, sister. Um, so first I want to say congratulations on your recent nuptial. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I actually kind of want to bring it on a personal level. You remind me. Why not? You remind me so much of my little brother. Um, you have the same mannerisms. Like you are, you're clearly older than he is, but you're. you're <laughs> But, you know. You never know. You never know. Are you 21? Let's not get into that right <laughs> now. I wish. Um, but, I mean, like, sometimes I'll be watching Chuck and, like, something that you will do as Chuck, and I'll be like, that's, that's Michael right there. Um, so I've always felt a little, like, connection to you, even though you don't know me at all. Um, so we're connecting now. We're, we're connecting, connecting now. And you tell um, Michael I think he's a great dude. <laughs> I think so too. He's actually just started his acting career as well. He's acting well, that, at a- Best of luck to him. Thank yeah. you, yeah. 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 Um, and I have always been really close to him and I know you have a really good relationship with your sister and I was just curious, kind of, have you always been really close? You know, what was your childhood like? Yeah, my sisters actually, who are both backstage. Who, uh, hi sisters! Hi sisters! And my, and my dad and Papa D. Oh, or, or actually no, they're <laughs> right here in the audience. Hi sisters, hi! Um, uh, you know, we we uh, we have. I mean, you know, there's there's like seasons of life where you're kind of more your own unit and you're doing life, and then there's seasons of life where you're closer. And uh, I mean, the first like roommate outside of living at my house was my older sister, and then uh, and then later on in life, my younger sister. And um, I think family is is really important, even when you absolutely want to kill each other. It's really really important. It's your blood, and you can't choose that. It chooses you. And um, I've learned. <laughs> like, I am a live wire, folks. I am just a nerve ending ready to explode. Um, uh, you know, you learn a lot from each other. You're forced to. And um, I think that's how God works. You know, he puts people in your life that, that shine and reflect back on you and, and force you to uh, learn love and, and learn how to love and learn how to be loved. And so I'm stoked for you and your brother. And do you have any other siblings? Okay, don't leave them out of the love, okay? <laughs> Just because Michael's the best and reminds you of me. Uh, don't leave your other brothers out. So keep that going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who, who next? Right here. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Love Chuck. Thank you. And love that you're working with Sesame Street. So from all thank the you. Teachers, thank you. So, I love that I'm working with Sesame Street as well. So if you could mash them together. If you did a Chuck episode and you had to switch out your sidekick and a villain with Sesame Street characters, <laughs> what would you do? Uh, yeah, right? I mean, there's, this, is, this could be a very losing answer for me right now. Um, I think the count has got to be the villain, I think. <laughs> so, um, just counting down like bomb times. Twenty. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Twenty seconds. That's it. That's all I got. And only one juice box. Um, and uh, uh, and then uh, Snuffleupagus is my sidekick. <laughs> Love me some snuff. Snuffleupagus. Uh, wow. <laughs> Did not think that through. Um, <laughs> first panel, folks. First panel. 
Uh, I, I don't know. Who would my psychic? I think Grover would be a good psychic. Whoa! <laughs> you love Grover. <laughs> yes, oh my God! Uh, or Ernie. I love me some Ernie. I don't, oh, well, not as much Ernie love. <laughs> Rubber ducky. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Something like that, I guess. Does that satisfy? I hope. Okay. Uh, who's next? Somebody next? Yes, right there. Nice shirt. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, congratulations on completing your first Broadway show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who, who, came, who came to first date? Oh, yes. I love you guys. Thank you. You know, every time I ask you if you've done something, you raise your hands, I always tell you I love you because I do. But I do. Uh, yes, continue. Yes, thank you. Um, we are big musical theater nerds. Oh, nice. And we're just wondering how big of a musical theater nerd are you? Do you have cast albums on your iPod? Do you work I have the, the first date cast album. <laughs> 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 I mean, I look, I grew up doing a lot of musical theater. Uh, I love musical theater. I've been to many musicals. I, you know, we're, we're all nerdy about different things. Cast albums, not my thing. Uh, but um, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I would love to do more musicals. Um, I, living in New York was awesome. I was able to really go and take in a lot of them. And I just, I, you know, I've always been that type of person because I like to sing in my own personal life. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, haters on musicals. They're like, yeah, like, anybody just breaks into song. <laughs> hello, my baby. Hello, my... You know, like, like, I do. I do. I do in the shower. I do in the car. I do down the sidewalk. My wife gets irked about it. I mean, it's like, it's that kind of thing. So, uh, so I do, I do love musicals. Uh, but I'm not a connoisseur of, of, uh, of, of albums, per se. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's next? Yeah, in the back, right there. Okay, um, I don't actually have a question. I wanted to thank you for something. Uh, during the Thor The Dark World red carpet, you personally brought Tom Hiddleston to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're welcome. And that was the most incredible, generous, wonderful, amazing thing anyone has ever done for me, and it gives me chills just thinking about it. That is really... I mean, I know he's good-looking and all, but... No, it was my... Well, if I remember correctly, you were, like, fully done up in your Loki yeah. gear. Yes. Yeah, and, and look, we happen to you be... Remember? We happen to be standing there. Did you write me a letter as well? I, I got that letter. Thank you for that letter. Thank you. Uh... Uh, no, look, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I just think when, you, when you're when you given an opportunity to go Thank you. make somebody's day, you know? You, you made my make life. Make somebody's Thank day you. if you can. And, and we were there. I was there. Tom was there. I saw you. I could see the earnestness <laughs> in your low-key eyes. I was like, this girl just needs a little Hiddleston right now. So <laughs> every girl was like, I need a little Hiddleston too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see your hands in the back. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're, you're so welcome. And I'm sure Thank if Tom you. were here right now, he'd say, you're so welcome. So <laughs> you're so welcome. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. You have a microphone. You have a microphone. Yes, sir. Hi. Um, Hi. So, so originally I got the tickets here for uh, my sister and her friend, Christine. Hi, sister and Christine. <laughs> but, uh, she could sister have a name. Yeah, Danielle. Oh, Danielle, hi. Oh, wait, but she couldn't be here. Well, then who is that imposter? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to take the ticket instead because she's giving away all of her goodbyes because she's going to the Disney College program soon. Oh, that's awesome. So I what does one study at the Disney College program? I have no idea. <laughs> all right. But I promised I'd give her a shout-out and ask her a question for her. Okay. And her question was, in what ways can an actor change in a character positively affect a movie? Does the new actor try and mimic the previous actor, or should he make the character his own. In regards to uh, Thor The Dark World... I would imagine. I would imagine. <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, um, I don't know. I don't know that there's any right or wrong... An what, your, her name was Danielle, you said, yes? No, Christine's the one who asked the question. Chris this is Danielle. Christine's just... A, well, so first of all, shout out. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. Um, congratulations on Disney College. Sounds dreamy. Um, I, uh, so, I, I don't know, like, I, I think that there, I don't know that there's a right or a wrong answer to that. I think that, uh, you, 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 you want to do right by what the person before you did. You don't want to, like, veer so far off the reservation that everybody's like, what is this Yahoo doing? That was me talking to myself. 
that thing. Um, eh, but then also you want to make it your own. You know, you, you, you don't want to feel like you're just like emulating whatever they did because I don't know that you're going to be able to do that perfectly anyway. So you kind of, kind of have to have it in your own voice and mannerisms. And Josh did a fantastic job as Fandle the first time around. I was honored to take over that job and uh, hope I did good by it. I don't know. Did you guys enjoy it? Oh, there you go. It's fun, you know? I, I got to be blonde and British as Guardian, of course. And now Thor's a chick, so, you know. <laughs> what? Uh, Fandle's going to have a field day with that. Wait a minute. Uh, moving on, moving on. Uh, anybody over here? Yes, right over there. Yes. Hey, Zach. Hi. Uh, uh, me, I have a first date question, too. Yeah, um, bring it. Yeah, we're, me and my sister and my friend, Carrie, we're from Jersey. So we went, drove up to see first Jersey. Day. We're from South Jersey. It's different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, you, if you've been there, you know. But, um, yeah, we really loved first date. It was great. Thank you. And um, my question is, aside from maybe in love with you, which is probably everybody's favorite, um, do you have a favorite um, section or part or, like, memory now that you're kind of removed from it that you took away from first date? I don't remember any of it. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I do. Um, wow, nobody really thought that was funny. They're like, really? <laughs> um, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, I... It was so, um, it was like the most crazy, challenging, um, rewarding, well, certainly one of the most challenging, rewarding experiences I've ever had as an actor. I mean, when you have to do eight shows a week for six months, uh, and it's just, you know, and there's no, like, you can't, you don't call in sick. You can't be like, oh, I'm feeling, I, mean, I guess you can. In fact, I did one day. Was anybody there that day? Did, any, did I just totally screw anybody that day? <laughs> Sorry, Eric. Um, I felt, you know, and I felt horrible. I felt horrible that one day I had to call in sick because I knew that there, even if there's one person that comes from wherever they come from, if it's just one person came to see me in a show, and there were, and I saw them on Twitter, and they were very disappointed, and I, I felt, you know, you feel horrible about it. So I tried to, even when I was feeling a little sick, I, you know, but it's, it's, it's really mentally, it's very taxing, um, and and you know, and telling the same jokes for a week. It's fun. Telling the same jokes for a month is interesting. And telling the same jokes for six months is like, it's like mind melting. Like you don't even, I didn't even know it was funny anymore. I was like, how did we start? Where did we go? The, you know? Um, so it was, it was very difficult, but, but it, it made, it forced me to, you know, really grow as, as a, as a man and as an actor. And, um, and you know, and I'll tell you what, you know, one of the things that, that consistently always like just fed me, you know, the, the love of all the people that would come out after the show at stage door and like, you know, and just be able to be there and, uh, and say, thanks for coming. And, you know, and kind of, you know, uh, was like, all right, this is, you know, this is why we do it. This is, this is why I do this. I, you know, I'm an actor. I mean, you know, I'm not making, well, I'm, I guess we make t-shirts, but I'm not, <laughs> so I guess I do make widgets of sorts, but like, you know, we, we put ourselves out there and, and you're vulnerable and you just want people to, hopefully, you know, like what you do. And um, so those memories I, I take a lot from. And, you know, look, having a full house with like a thousand people and, you know, standing ovation, like it, there's nothing like that. Making a thousand people laugh is like the greatest drug in the world. It's so cool. Like your endorphins are like out of your mind. It's so cool. So, uh, and just a really incredible cast to work with. Beautiful people, lovely, lovely. And, um, and uh, you know, there was only seven of us. So we were, we were very tight. And if you're watching right now, I love you guys and I miss you and I hope, hope to see you soon wherever you are oh so there you go yeah uh over here somewhere or is that yes hello sir nice tardis hello thank you i have a message and a question a message from my friend carlin and a question from me okay which one do you want first uh <laughs> what the <a> message <laughs> okay she loves nerd hq but she can be here so she told me to say hi to you, so. Hi, what was your name? Kathleen. Kathleen, hi Kathleen. I don't know where you are. Somewhere foreign, based on your friend's accent. No, she's actually from the States. Oh, she's from this, oh. Yeah. Oh, hey Kathleen. Because <laughs> that's my American accent, apparently. Uh, come some year, if we keep doing yeah, it. I, I keep telling her that. All right, yes, please. Um, and and the question, question is, yeah. um, I'm going to be in the 
Walking Dead panel. Fantastic. Yeah, we got a Walking Dead panel this year, huh? About time. And the question is, do you have or remember any favorite or memorable moment with Lauren Cohen when working on Chuck? <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we actually we had an episode we were out at... Um, I feel like it was like maybe the first episode she was in. We were out at some ranch and with horses and... Uh, and I, I think that was like when we were first starting to get to know one another and she was just such a cool chick. And uh, we were talking about horses in England and like you do. And, uh, <laughs> but I remember feeling like, you know, yet again, like a cool person. We were so blessed to have so many great guest stars on Chuck and just that were not just talented, but really lovely people. And she was another awesome, lovely, talented person that we got to work with, and for a while as well. And so then when I saw her on Walking Dead, I was just stoked. I love, you know, when you see people that you like and are good people and you see them succeed, it just lifts you up more, you know? Like you go, oh, the world's not such a crap place. <laughs> it's a good place. So yeah, there you go, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so that's, that's a memory, yeah. Uh, yeah, so over there. Yes, go ahead, stand up. Um, I was wondering what you would like to happen next in your life, either professionally or personally. What are you looking forward to? Um, well, I'd like to make it through this weekend alive. That's one thing. Um, and then, I, you know, I don't know. I just, I just want to, I just, I just want to keep doing stuff that people like, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard when you put yourself out there. And uh, again, going back to what we've been talking about, and maybe it's just stuff that keeps running through my head that I need to let go of, clearly. Uh, I need to talk to a shrink. Um, but it's, it, it, it's hard to not, you know, when you put yourself out there, you know, to, to, to have that anything negative come at you is just tough to battle. And uh, so I just like doing things that people enjoy, and I would love to do... Um, I'd love to do another series, I think, at this point. I think there's been enough time between... But uh, now from, yeah, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, uh, to go and do something where I'm with a, a family again in that regard, you know, I, I miss our family at Chuck. We just had such a great community, a great family, and going to, going to work every day with them was a, a pleasure, and um, to have that again, you know, let my nine to five be, you know, all right, what, what, what are we doing now? I think that'd be a lot of fun. I'd like to do more theater. I'd like to do films, uh, you know, wherever I can go and people go, yeah, we, we like you and, and you'll do well here, I guess. I, I don't know. And maybe have a family at some point. I think personally, that's what I'd like to do on that, on that level. But I'm going to give that a little bit of time <laughs> and enjoy my Starbucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, first I want to tell you, I feel like a superstar that I even got tickets to the panel. So I was All right, a winner. Superstar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you sold out in like that. So it was really awesome. So thank you for being here. And doing yeah. This. And thank you for coming. Yeah. And second, um, I'm a teacher, elementary school teacher, and I would get so much grief if I came face to face with Flynn Ryder and didn't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting a smolder. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask for the smoke. Ah! Rest of my life. No, no I was going to ask for a little song. You're in a safe place. It's safe. You're safe. You're in a safe place. I don't know what y'all are applauding for. I ain't going to sing for you. Oh. I ain't going to sing. That's special. <laughs> I do that late. No. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. That'll do the trick. Um, I have dreams like you. No, really. Just much less touchy-feely. They mainly happen somewhere warm and sunny. On an island of my own, tanned and rested and alone, surrounded by a million piles of money. No, it's, uh, <laughs> see, that's why. That's why I don't do it, because I don't even remember the words. Enormous, enormous piles of money. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And tell the kids I said hi. Well, they'd appreciate the song more than the smolder, I think, so. Okay, good. <laughs> I like the smolder. What are you smolder. saying? They don't like my smolder? No, no, no. I like the smolder. 
I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, anybody on this? Uh, yes, you right there. Hi. Hi, Wolverine. Hi, I'm Molly. Hi, Molly, Wolverine. Oh. <laughs> um, sorry. So, I just, you know, we are your army here, rather like Loki has, and we want to support you, and I was wondering, we all want a Chuck movie. Keep waiting. Well, and I know it feels like moving back instead of forward, but we just love the character so much. What can we do? You know, should we start some sort of Twitter revolution? Can uh, we want to be a part of it? And I well, I, I I've said before, and I'll say again, and I will continue to say, I actually would really like to do a Chuck movie. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I don't. I actually don't know the best way to go about that, honestly. Uh, it's, I, I wish it was as easy as like, let's all just go make it. But it's, it's so complicated. It is so complicated. Um, what I would say is that as much as like all of the various online campaigns and everything that I have seen pop up, as awesome as that is to see, I don't know that that's gonna get the traction necessary to make it happen until it's actually like ready, ready, ready to happen. So if and when the time comes that it's ready, ready to happen, I guaranteed I will be the first one to say, and it's happening, and this is what we have to do. So wait for that, I guess, and I'll do what I can in the meantime to convince the powers that be, like, hey, let's try and make this happen. Um, I, I, I don't, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's, comp it's, just, it's complicated. Uh, but I would like to make it happen. I do, and, I, and I would love to work with Yvonne and Adam and Josh and Sarah and Ryan and, and, uh, and everyone. I, you know, it, it, I, think it, I think it's a... I think it's something that could really be fun to do and just do another, like, you know, installment of, of these characters and where they're at and whether memories came back or not. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, and, but thank you. Thank you for uh, being a part of that army and for believing in me and that and for being here today. Thank you. Uh, yes, hello, darling. Uh, so you seem to be the darling of the industry. Everyone really likes to walk, work with you and think you're really Thanks. awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so I have a, <laughs> a two-part question on that. Hit me. Uh, one, do you find it difficult to kind of filter out the people that want to latch on you just because of your popularity and how much people want to work on you or work with you? <laughs> it's also early for me. Sorry about that. Freudian slip. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, and second part. Uh, do you find it difficult at times, like, obviously you are a nice guy, but everyone has their moments to not be yourself necessarily because you think you have that nice guy reputation to keep up? Excellent questions. Excellent questions. Um, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, I'm a darling. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I... Uh, I don't know that I. I don't know that it's hard to to know, you know. I think I think you can kind of see people coming. For the most part, you can, if you, if you keep your eyes open, you can see people coming who are trying to latch. Um, and I try to be mindful of that and uh, grace gracious with that too, because I don't even know that everybody knows that they're trying to do that when they're doing that. You know, I think I think people. Um, I think you know, fame and celebrity and all that stuff is really weird. It really screws with people's heads and. And, and people who have famous celebrities screws with their heads. It's very, you know, and it's weird because a lot of people start treating you differently. Uh, even if you don't start acting differently, people start acting differently to you, even very close people to you. And then you don't know what to do with that. So then you kind of have to act differently toward them. And then, it, it, I don't know, things get very strange sometimes. So um, I find that the more I can just act like a complete idiot, the better. Because uh, it, you know, it, it can kind of just keep you normal. And I try to be as normal as I can. Um, I put my pants on two legs at a time, just like everybody else. Um, <laughs> I'll work on that delivery. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I, it, it happens, I guess, but you just, I don't know, you try to keep your eyes open to that. And then also surround yourself with people that really care about you and will, you know, aren't afraid to look at you and say, hey, stop being a dummy, you know? Um, and that can help incubate you from people that are trying to latch on, so that's important. And then as far as uh, being a nice guy, I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, there's, I, I do, I do feel, I do feel an element. Certainly I feel, I feel, um, I don't ever want to be not nice to anybody. Um, and I, and I honestly don't think, you know, I, it, it doesn't cost you anything, uh, to be kind. Um, I, f I do feel kind of a, I, I don't know. I feel a little bit of a pressure sometimes to always be happy and I'm not, you know, um, I'm not always happy. It's, uh, life is hard. You know, uh, you guys can all attest to that. We can all attest to that. Life is hard. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what level of success you've risen to or fallen from or whatever. It's hard. And um, uh, I do feel like, I do feel like God has created me to make, to bring happiness. And so when I feel like I'm not doing that, I feel like I'm failing. And that's hard. Well, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that, but it, it is, you know, it's hard. It's, it's, uh, um, but I keep, I keep losing you in the crowd. Um, but so, yeah, so I do feel that a little bit of that I do. Um, and I, but I also, I also want, I do want to be nice to, to everybody. Even pe you know, I do, I believe in certain tenants. I believe that, I believe that we are to turn the other cheek. I think we are to go an extra mile. I think we are to you know, somebody oh, thanks. <laughs> what does this say? What does this say? People start bringing Kleenex to my panels. It's all over, folks. It's all <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, it's, ask for your shirt, give me your cloak as well. I mean, I do because I think it's so powerful. You know what I mean? Like, in, instead, of, instead of letting somebody attack you and you just get baited into that attack back, to just love them back and to be graceful with them back and say, hey, man, where do you want to go with this? Because I'm not going to hate you. I know whatever's going on in you is something that's way deeper than what's ever going on between us, so I'm just going to love you back. I mean, that's so powerful. So to the extent that you guys can take that, take that. And then, <laughs> thanks. It's hot in here. We need to get that AC cooking. Let's go. Uh, yes, hi, hi. Okay. That was beautiful. Um, Thank you. <laughs> sure. Uh, love Chuck, anything Chuck related. Thanks. And so I read Kristen Newman's autobiography. Uh, she's a writer on Chuck. Yeah, she has an autobiography. Yeah, it's a travel memoir. This is actually the finale. Congrats, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Um, and this is actually the finale of three weeks backpacking on the way here. Um, hmm. So it's a travel memoir. Anyway, in the wait, you just backpacked for three weeks and ended here? Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So it was awesome. Thank you. Um, Culminating in HQ. <laughs> exactly. Um, anyway, in the book, she talks about her travels and one of the trips she took to Columbia inspired an episode of Chuck. And so I was just curious if there was anything in real life influence for you, or maybe you know of cast or crew that kind of inspired other episodes. Ooh. Um. No. <laughs> um, no, I know, like, the writers, like, writers, you know, it's like, it's one of those kind of, like, uh, adages. I don't even know what I'm looking for here. Uh, you writers write what they know. You know, you write what you know. And um, so I, I know for a fact, I can't, I, I don't know if I could give you specific, specific examples, um, but I know that the, the, the show was riddled with, like, personal experiences and stories and things that the writers all, you know, were kind of a part of. Um, oh, oh, actually, no, I do, I do remember one. Um, remember how Ellie, uh, there was a line, I can't remember this, like, sec first season, second season, she was talking about my hair and how it made funny animal shapes. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> so I read that originally. I was like, I have no idea what the hell that means. I don't know what that means. And, uh, and a, we had a writer named Zev Barrow on the show, and he had, like, crazy curly hair, and apparently somebody was like, it makes weird animal shapes, and that ended up in the show. So, uh, it's, it's that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, like, Josh and I were Chuck and Morgan for all intents and purposes. Uh, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't watched the show. Uh, so, you know, a lot of our gaming and geeking out and all that stuff, you know, that kind of certainly, I mean, there were a lot of little bits and ad-libs and things that we would constantly pepper in that sometimes would make the show and sometimes wouldn't. Some of them that didn't that I thought, this is gold, why wasn't it in the episode? Because it wasn't. Um, but, uh, but a lot of that stuff. 
Yeah. I mean, it's it's such a personal experience, and it's so day to day that you can't help but your to have your person kind of leak into it, and the writer's experience and their person leak into it as well. Yeah. And welcome back from wherever you went. Where did you go? Okay, but all, all within the United States. Yeah. Keeping it local, well done. Well done. I always found it interesting, like so many people like, you know, they graduate college and you go backpacking in Europe and then they're like, oh, you ever been to the Grand Canyon? No. <laughs> it's like, what, it's such a beautiful country we have and you've never even been through it. Not that I've been through that much, but I have been to the Grand Canyon and it is surreal, folks. If you get a chance, go to the Grand Canyon. It looks like a painting, it doesn't even look real. Yellowstone as well, I'd like to go. I did feel, I feel like I cheated the Grand Canyon a little bit though, because I felt like Cl Clark Griswold. I was like, all right, oh, oh, Grand Canyon, right, here we go. I mean, it was like literally, it's it like that fast, but I did get to see it, so that happened. Uh, yes, you have a microphone? No, you don't. Uh, get that man a microphone, I'll talk to another Wonder Woman. Or, or, oh, look at that, people helping people with audio equipment. Um. I I started watching. I, I'll get to my question, but I started watching Chuck last year, and I just want to. And I'm like almost done with season four right now. And I just want to say thank you for the work you did on that show because it really touched me in a lot of ways and helped me through um, well uh, some loneliness and a breakup. And it was really just it's been a powerful show in my life. So thank you, dude. Thank God. That, I mean, I that was just an opportunity for me to be that, and I'm glad that that meant something to you. Yeah. Um, and my question is, were there any episodes of Chuck that you remember where you were just like? Man, I can't believe we actually got that done. Where it was just like so, like, like that you can't believe you were able to film it, or like something really like a troublesome episode, or some things, things that just kept going wrong with a certain episode. Any stuff like that that you remember? Every single one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Um, uh, I mean, but no, but you know what? A lot, a lot. I, I, I don't know that I can think. Well, the first episode I direct, or maybe every episode I directed, I felt like I just survived so i was like because i'm not really direct you know i was an, i'm an actor by trade primarily and so when i got the opportunity to direct episodes um I, there was stuff i felt very comfortable doing and there was stuff that i felt very very out of my elements and thank god i had an incredible crew around me that knew what they were doing and i had actors that trusted me enough to listen to various notes that i would give them even if they didn't make any sense and uh but the show was was gnarly i mean it was a really really hard show to make we had um you know, I think kind of, you know, earlier on, we uh, we ended up going from like eight day episodes to seven day episodes or seven and a half. And for a show of that of that size where you got action and comedy and romance and drama and mystery and, you know, this whole cornucopia of crazy, uh, it's not easy to do in seven and a half days. So every single one was very difficult. But, you know, we were by the grace of God and because we, we had such an incredible group, we were able to make it happen. And we had such an incredible group of people like you who loved the show enough to keep us going. So, uh, so it all worked out. <laughs> but I'm so glad that you're watching. Are you just recently watching the show, or I I, I love it. I love I love meeting people who are just discovering the show even after it's off the air. How many people have watched Chuck since it's been off the air? Wow, that's a lot of people. That's wait, did you st and, and con entirely off off air like? You didn't even watch it once when it was on television. Where the hell were you? <laughs> Netflix. Netflix is great, isn't it? Love me some Netflix. I, I, meet, I constantly meet people now that are like, I, I didn't watch the show on, when it was on air, but I watch it on Netflix, and it's so much fun. And I, I go, hey, man, welcome to the club. <laughs> I'm glad you finally see how genius it was. Uh, yes, right over here. Okay. Hi, Zach. Hi. My name is Sumi. Is it loud? Okay. Yes, it is. I just, I don't have, oh, I can hear it, okay. I don't have um, a question, I just wanna say thank you. Um, I'm sure everybody else, so I'm just gonna say it for you so you don't have to say it again. Um, I wanna say thank you for everything that you do. Um, I, this is my first year of volunteering with Nerd HQ, so I'm really excited to be here. And everything that you do, you do it wholeheartedly, you do it like with sincerity, you're amazing, and you're, you kind of serve as an inspiration to just everyone to just be a nice human being. And I just want to say thank you. Um, I don't get emotional, <laughs> so I'm not going to. But um, anyway. <laughs> I'm kind of dead inside, so if that's cool. No, no. no, no. Thank, thank you. Thank no, you. Your, I, last, I, your last answer, I was like, you know, I needed that Kleenex to shoot. Not that one, but yeah. I mean, I could use that one too, but um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. Your entire team, everybody is amazing. Um, and I'm just, I'm very proud to be a part of the team now. So uh, We're so, so glad to have you. I, I, any other volunteers here in the audience today or have volunteered in the past or 
God bless you guys. We love you. Thank you. And by the way, uh, for all of you guys here in the audience today, you know, uh, if, if you, uh, when you, when you're out experiencing Nerd HQ, uh, throw somebody a high five. If you look at the volunteers, just say thanks. If you see anybody working, any, any of the vendors, sponsors, uh, anybody, anybody that's <laughs> has any HQ crap on their chest or a, a lanyard or whatever, everybody works their butt off to make this happen. It's, it's really a crazy undertaking. And we have like, I don't know how many, how many, a hundred volunteers this year? How many do we have? A, a thousand million. Um, and, uh, and they're all, and, and that's exactly what they're doing. They are volunteering. They are, they are giving their time to make this happen for you guys. So, so just say, Hey, <laughs> thanks. Uh, free high five. Or Thank whatever. you, yeah. and I love you. I love you, too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yes! Right there in the back. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sorry. This is entirely uh, entirely selfish, but I'm, I'm so emotional with everybody here, and everything's so great. Can I, can I just have a hug? If I give out one hug right now, is everybody going to be okay with that? All right, come I'm down sorry. here. I'm come sorry. Come down. You get one hug. One hug. Doing it on my knees here. Come here, you. Come here. Hugs are good. Yes, in the back. Oh, right here. Right. Yes, right here. Sorry. Um, can I have a hug too now? No. <laughs> we just went over this. Uh, first, I want to say um, congratulations also on your marriage. Um, Thanks. And as a brother in Christ, I'm uh, always praying for you. Um, that really and, means a lot to me. And your Thanks, wife man. now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm a hopeless romantic. Uh, I've known my wife for a few years, but then we uh, whirlwind of things happened, and we got married last year, too. So Congratulations. Um, your marriage, uh, you know, caught me off guard. I was like, wow, that's, that's great. You know, you got married. So as a hopeless romantic, I don't know if it's okay to ask this or not, can you kind of give us a background of how you two met and how that all came about? Is that too personal? I'm not going to get into my personal life. Okay. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I've known her for, uh, uh, I, uh, no, that's just going to get into personal stuff. Um, uh, what's that? <laughs> how did you know? No, uh, no, I, I actually met her 10 years ago. We've known each other for a long time and, uh, She's an amazing woman, and uh, and she loves Jesus, and uh, you know, and she loves me. So that's you know, that's that's as far as I'll go with that stuff. Yes, right over there. Hi. Hi. Um, I actually have a couple of acting questions. Bring um, it. Yeah. So I'm um, I'm actually in a musical right now, and it's in the middle of. Is a, it cabaret? Uh, <laughs> no, what well, you're wearing it's, right it's actually a musical about, uh, it's a comedy about Comic-Con. Oh, um, no way. It's up in Hillcrest. Okay. Uh -huh, Geeks, the musical. Uh -huh. um, but <laughs> a shameless plug. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but we're in the middle of a one-month run, and being that it's a comedy and you've been in musical comedy, and I'm just, I'm just wondering, um, A, how did you guys work to keep all the jokes fresh, you know? Um, in the cast and for your audience and make sure that it, you know, it felt brand new every night. And um, how difficult is it? Um, I know that you're uh, originally, originally musical theater, but how difficult is it uh, transitioning between theater, live theater, and film? Um, the um, trying to keep things fresh, like I was saying earlier, can can be very difficult. Um, but I think you know the biggest asset you have or, or tool that you can use is just literally staying present and just taking every moment as it's coming to you as if it's happening for the first time, which you know, from an acting standpoint is a very strange thing to do. Um, you almost kind of have to trick yourself into thinking, I've never done this before, even though you have many, many times. Um, so that helps a lot. And just you know, being present with your scene partner and, and, uh, and, and, and also, you know, I've found that I would just try and just, you know, screw with the timing of jokes a little bit. Um, uh, you know, hit a punchline a little bit later or sooner or uh, emphasize words a little bit differently. Trying to find something that made it a little bit newer and fresher for me and then also it would make it newer and fresher for who I was doing a scene with. Um, I sometimes give them a heads up that you're doing that because <laughs> sometimes I wouldn't. And, uh, but that was fun for me. Um, 
So there's that. And then I'm, what, what was the, oh, uh, transitioning from theater into, um, yeah, that's weird. It's weird. Uh, I, I, you know, fortunately, I kind of went from theater into multi-camera comedies originally. I did a couple pilots, and then I did a show called Less Than Perfect. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I was young then. Um, and, uh, but, it, you know, but multi-camera comedy is very much like theater in that you have a live audience, and you don't have a, tr a ton of, like, close-ups, so you're kind of acting a little bit bigger. I probably acted a little bit bigger than everyone else because everyone else knew what the hell they were doing. And I was like, what are we doing projecting to the little old lady in the back row? You know, I was doing that kind of stuff. And then like, just simmer down, Zach, just bring it down a notch. Um, so, but I was able to kind of tr transition into that. And then I kind of got into more stuff like, you know, Chuck and film and stuff. But um, I think the, I, I mean, to me, it's all it just, you, you always should be about true. It should always be true. Like, it should always be a real moment. It's just a matter of how much energy do you give that moment, you know? And um, I'm kind of an animated person anyway, so I have to constantly be, like, just bring it down, just real, just be real. Um, uh, and with theater, you gotta, you gotta project it, that energy. And when your camera's on you, like right here, then you gotta, you know, just make that energy a little bit smaller. But it should always be real on that, on that spectrum, you know? If, I don't know if that helps at all. Good, okay. <laughs> Uh, yes, Wonder Woman, who so graciously gave up her microphone earlier. Yes. Uh, I'm so far removed from, like, the pilot of Chuck, and I'm sure you are too. So what would your message be to a young you just starting out, Chuck? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, just enjoy it. Just um, trust in the process. And, uh, and trust that people are gonna like it or might even love it. And, um, and be grateful, you know? I think that's honestly one of, I think that's one of the, the biggest lessons that, uh, I don't know, I mean, I, I continue to learn is even in the hardships, even in the, in the testings, you know, um, be grateful because you're, you're, you're being, <laughs> you're often being broken down to be built back up. You're often, you know, and, and Chuck was, it was, it was, it really was, it was gnarly. I mean, a lot of people, I, I, I can't say it enough. It was, it was a really intense show. It was, it was difficult to do. Uh, and then also feeling like, you know, you want it to be like the biggest, hugest thing that's any, you know, uh, anyone's ever seen. And you want every joke to land and you want every stunt to work. And you, uh, I really care about everything that I do. I want it to be excellent excellent and uh and and sometimes in your drive you just miss out on a lot of things and you miss out on the jo on the joy that it's already bringing and i i get really uh intense on myself in that stuff so i would look back at in fact you know five years from now so you're gonna ask me this question about when you start a nerd hq and i'm gonna say <laughs> don't be so intense on yourself Enjoy it and be grateful, and uh, you know, and uh, you know what? And you guys make me grateful for it every day. You make me grateful for this. You make me grateful for Chuck. So thank you, thank you for making me grateful for all that stuff. <laughs> yes, hi. Hello. Hi, Zach. My name is Elise. Hi, Elise. Hi, I'm Zach. You. <laughs> so I've been going to uh, Comic Con for seven years now, and last year, so everybody always asks, "Hey, what's your favorite moment from Comic Con?" And you made my fangirl year last year. So whenever people ask me what my favorite moment was, I tell them it was last year at Nerd HQ on what? the Richard Madden panel. Oh, oh, and yeah, you, yeah. And you get a little quiver voice. Oh, wait, wait, I, wait, what happened? I thanked, I thanked you for just being an amazing, good soul character like Chuck. Oh, thank you. And so you made my year last year. Well, I was happy to be a part of making one's year. That's fantastic. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, what was your favorite Comic-Con moment last year? You know, honestly, maybe that same panel, but when Matt and uh, uh, Je Je Jenna, Jenna uh, yeah, ran through the door, and I had no idea they were going to do that. I mean, just that Richard came and did a panel, I was so stoked about, because I'm such a big Game of Thrones fan, and I just think he's such an awesome dude, and so talented, and, and dead. Um, <laughs> oh my god, they're just dropping like flies! Spoiler alert! Um... But, uh, but you know, for them to, what's this? 
Is this more coffee? That better be whiskey. Fantastic. Thank you. What is it? Oh, just water? I have water. Oh, right, okay. Sponsored by Coke, apparently. <laughs> I feel like Simon Cowell. Anybody? No? Um, uh, yeah, that was, a pretty, that was a pretty awesome moment. I don't know. It's really hard for me to pick favorites because I feel like every panel has just these, you know... I don't know. Just we, every panel has got at least at least well, I mean quite a few moments where somebody was just stoked. Somebody got a, a question answered that they never would have been answered. They had a moment where they, you know, this is what's what's so great for me is that this allows all of us, us up here and you here, to be seen and heard. And I think that that's so important. And so every single time somebody is seen and heard, I go, that's awesome. I'm I'm stoked on that. But yeah, Jenna and Matt running through the door. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> and funny and awesome and the epitome of what I love this for is because you never know what the heck's gonna happen. Like Tom being in a Velociraptor. Like, you know. How do you do that? I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to recreate that. It's all downhill from there. That's right. Uh, somebody over here, yes, you Yay, the awesome nerd shirt. You got it. <laughs> Um, okay, I had my mic before this girl, and I came from Utah for this very moment. Oh, thanks. I brought my sister for oh, her hi, 30th sis. birthday. Happy birthday. To meet Zachary Levi, and I am leaving as soon as this is over. Wait, Can really? she shake your hand if you're not giving out hugs anymore? Come here, shake my hand. Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> come on, sis. I'm Be sorry, embarrassed I for your birthday. for her. It's her birthday. It was really a big deal. Come here. Come here, come here, shake my hand, give me a hug. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Hey, what's life if you don't have a sister that's going to embarrass you on your birthday? Thanks for coming from Utah. It's a long drive. Yes, in the back right there. Hi. Um, Hi. This is kind of a moment that's been like four years in the making. I'm a firm believer that things find you when you need them. And I had a pretty serious accident about four years ago where I completely ripped my leg open, basically. And I was told I probably wasn't going to walk properly again. And a friend of mine gave me Chuck. And it was at a really low point. I was thinking I wasn't going to walk. And it was nine months rehabilitation. And for the first time in ages, I laughed. And I just wanted to thank you for that because that is such a huge thing. And uh, so I traveled from Australia to come here specifically for Nerd HQ to tell you that and to thank you because that was huge and I needed that. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have been a part of that. So, um, and my question is, do you have a favorite book? <laughs> You're assuming that I read, which is... Um, I assume you read scripts. I, so. I do. <laughs> I hope I do. Um, a favorite book. Um, you know, I was actually, we, my sister and I were talking about this the other day, uh, how we cliff noted our way through high school. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, well, not really. Sorry, teachers. Um, uh, that's horrible. Kids, don't cliff note your way through school. <laughs> Why am I talking about this? Um, I read some books. Uh, comic books, graphic novels. I love graphic novels, by the way. I think they're fantastic. I just like pictures. I think that helps. <laughs> pictures help tell a story. Um, I do. Well, favorite graphic novel. Uh, I actually said this on Twitter the other day. Somebody had asked me about this. I mean, I kind of my three to date. My three favorites are Fear Agent, uh, Why the Last Man, and DMZ. I'm reading DMZ right now. What? I should be why? Yeah. Why? Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I would love to be Yorick. Uh, I don't know that that's ever going to happen. I, I don't. I don't know. It, that's they've been trying to make it happen for a long time. It's very difficult to do. Uh, that's that's a that's a massive story, and for a studio to make that movie, how do, you know you'd have to commit to doing like at least a trilogy, but you don't even know if the first one's going to do well enough to sustain the next two. So you you know it's a it's a big risk. So I understand why they're having a hard time doing it. I'd love to. Uh, by the time they make it, I might be 50, and I don't know if you're. Like, <laughs> I'll try. Um, as far as books are concerned, um, uh, you know, I really, um, 
I, you know, I remember I, I did this. I did this in reverse order, but I remember reading Jurassic Park after I saw the movie. What a great book! Uh, Crichton, I think, is this a great? Um, and then, um, and this is kind of an off. It was actually it was it was uh, reading in, in school, but I just was really transfixed by it, even though it's super scary. Uh, I mean, or what, you know, what the future could be, but A Brave New World. That, that book, really, yeah, I really, really like that book, and I'm terrified of that book. And maybe that's why I like it so much. And it's why I love technology in the future so much, why I'm terrified of technology in the future. Because I really have no idea where we're going. Uh, like, this, I'm comfortable with this. I'm comfortable with, like, hey, look at this technology. I can talk into a microphone, and it can be amplified, and we can stream it to the world. That's all well and good. But once our robot overlord starts <laughs> taking off, well, I don't know anymore. That's, uh, and it all seems to be heading there, right? So I don't know. But that, I would say that, yeah, that's kind of a favorite, a favorite book. How much, by the way, I've lost my clock on my monitor. Do we know how much time I have left? An hour? <laughs> all right, get comfortable, guys. <laughs> yes, right here. Hi. Hey. Um, I just wanted to say that the good heart that everyone that's involved in the Nern machine seems to have has attracted so many positive people in the community itself. So there's been a large group of us that have been in communication on Twitter, and we met for the first time this weekend. No way! Yeah, that's fantastic. And, um, I mean, Jane's from Ireland, and she's. No, I know Jane there. from Ireland. <laughs> so. But there's a group of us that just wanted to stand up and thank you, and just everyone involved in the Nerd Machine just for bringing us together, because it's meant a lot. Absolutely, to stand, us, stand so. and be counted. I love you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, look at little Chuck and Sarah over here. I love that you guys. I love that you guys. Oh, oh love my last. I love. Thank you. 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 Thank you that you guys have found. Uh, a, a voice in a place at the Nerd Machine. Thank you that you have found each other. Thank you that you have all finally gotten to meet each other here at Nerd HQ. I mean, I, I got to tell you, uh, I'll, I'll do. I got one more, one more. Do I got time for one more question? I got time for one more question. Uh, but before I get to that question, um, did you have something else you wanted to say? I just, I had a follow-up question. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, That'll be my last question. Um, I was wondering. You've always been so open about how much your fans mean to you, and I was curious. This may be a tough one, but. Um, if you could pick one song that defined how you feel about your fans, what would that song be? Is I Wanna Sex You Up? Is that, is that, is that weird? I wanna sex you up. Uh, I don't. These are the things that I need to filter. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. I really don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna stay with. I, I want to set you up though. Um, and I'm gonna do. And 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 then. But I'll, I want to follow up on on. Uh, not on. I want to sex you. I want to go back to what you were talking about before, which is. Um, you know, we. Uh, we start a lot of you guys. If you if you contributed to the campaign that we did, and or if you guys have been in NerdHQ before, or whatever, like you know, you've heard me say this before. But for everybody here, you know, because because it's my panel, so I get to say whatever the heck I want to say. Uh, uh, you know, we we Dave and I started the Nerd Machine because we wanted to, we just were like, hey, let's 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 make cool T-shirts and stuff and like and nerdy stuff to like that we're, we can all wear this proudly and say this is what we're about and we have a common brand. You know, we wanted to start a business and we wanted to do good as a business and sell merch and, and do well. And, and in a way to activate that brand, that's why we started Nerd HQ. And, you know, we were like, well, what are, the, what are cool ways to bring people through where if they like what we do, they would want to buy merch. And to us, it's, well, give, give people as much as you can. Give them panels, give them photos, give them signings, give them video games, give them tech. Don't charge anything for that, and if you do, give all that to, to charity, because we didn't, you know, again, we just wanted to make it as sweet and as cool and as awesome as we could, and if you guys resonated with that stuff, then we could do good as a business. So that's part one. Part two is, if we never make a dime, which, God help us, help us to make a dime. <laughs> but if we never make a dime, you know, something that really struck me uh, yesterday when I was thinking about all this stuff is I look out at 
this panel and I look at all the panels that we have all weekend long and I see you guys stand up and I see you guys get to connect and meet each other and find each other and that's, that's our dimes. That's our dollars. That's, that's worth way, that's more than a million dollars. That's the fact that we're able to sow into your lives pays us those dividends. So if we don't ever do well as a business, <laughs> yeah, all right. But I, but I know that at the end of the day, we'll have succeeded. Even if it's a flop as a business, we'll have succeeded in the lives of people. So thank you for making me feel like we've done something good. And thank you for finding each other and thank you for loving each other and go out and continue to love on everybody as you go out into the con and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And that's, uh, and that's my panel and thank you guys. Thank you. So everybody sit back down. I'm, I'm over here. All right. Hi. <laughs> all right, so we're going to exit all the wings first. Everybody here, just chill for a minute, all right? Wings go first. All right, bye back. You guys are all going to go out and exit out there through the venue, and don't forget your wristbands. Check in. Get them registered. All out there, okay? Got it? So wings first. Go ahead and stand up. Yes, yes, you guys can sit there. So both sides of the wings go first, and then we'll do row one, and then